Good morning, guys. How are you? Listen, thank you for tuning in to the, uh, to the report this morning on the markets. I'm going to move rather quickly through the markets. And uh, the reason why, I want to talk about Italy. Italy uh, is, is a big problem, huge problem. It's probably going to take down the whole Eurozone at a certain point. Uh, they, uh, they've got a government in there now that's Eurosceptic anyway at this point. So uh, I, I didn't really actually realize how big at least that was until this morning and I got reading up on it. I knew it was big, but I didn't know exactly how much it was. Anyway, uh, today's Friday. Uh, and uh, listen, you guys are going to have a great weekend this weekend. It's uh, the 15th. Uh, and it doesn't feel like the 15th. We've had it awful cold. Uh, I uh, There's another thing I want to get talking about, you know, is why has it been so doggone cold? Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, I've never seen such a cold spring. Uh, last night I had to put two blankets on the bed. You know, I mean, it's cold. Uh, okay, let's get started. First off, let's start the charts right here. Pow. And uh, we're going to go to... Uh, Cryptocurrency, this right first thing, Bitcoin uh, is 65.10 this morning, so it's recovered just a little tad. Uh, it was down like 60, uh, 60, let me go back 15 minute chart here. Uh, it was down to 61.20, you know, and it's recovered back to 65.10, but that's not much of a recovery, really. Uh, it's this little recovery, uh, if you could call it a recovery, it, let's focus in on it. It's this little thing right Let's be focused the chart in on it so you can see. Just give me a second. It was like 61.20 right here. And it's come up uh, to 65.10. So if you could call that actually a recovery, it's not really a recovery. Uh, so now let's move over and let's take a look at the silver price. Okay, uh, let me open the chart up again a little bit. And what we see here is right this minute, right while I'm speaking, they're in the middle of a smackdown. It's, it's, I mean, it's just, see, it's went past the, uh, past the, past the, the levels it was for the last three days. And it's went right down now to a new low level uh, uh, during this smackdown. It's a smackdown. Now, I'll tell you what I think. Uh, yesterday, I said that uh, the longer it can stay in around 1720, the more likely it's going to stay in around 1720. Uh, it touched my 1720 target, and it was going along there around 1720. And now, this morning, I mean, it was right, right at 1720 this morning. Bang! Look at the smackdown. Now, I'll tell you what I think about this smackdown. I think they better be darn careful. Because this, I think, is going to recoil back. I think later this afternoon we're going to see this recoil, a uh, recoil action on this. So the, the harder they smack it down, they smacked it down really hard this morning. I think we might see a little bit of recoil action later today. Uh, a bounce back up into the, uh, uh, probably back up to $17 maybe or even a little bit higher. Uh, back up and in the next couple of days I think it's going to go back up to 1720 again, I think. Uh, I don't think this uh, this smackdown is going to last very long. I think it's getting harder and harder from the smack it down because uh, it's getting harder and harder for the uh, miners uh, to, to make a profit, you know. And uh, this is just a sign of their power over this market, this particular smackdown uh, that they're doing here. But this kind of volatility... It makes for a uh, hefty, it start, they start to buy silver if you get a lot of volatility down to the downside and to the upside. It get, brings the buyers into the market. Now let's take a look at uh, at uh, the Dow Jones. Uh, gee, uh, I'm, I'm not on the chart here. Uh, I should be. There, let's open the chart. Open the chart up. Uh, it's down 140 points on the day so far. Uh, and this has probably got a lot to do with uh, with the trade tariff uh, that we just went in today uh, against China. Uh, the reason why it's down 140. So I would imagine that's kind of limiting. It's probably going to only take it down around 100 points today. Is all that 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 does. Uh, and it could even rebound a little bit this afternoon. 
uh, but uh, it's it's no biggie. It's still going along. If we look here, we see the uh, uh, the the market has been ever since this major uh, uh, correction in the market uh, that was caused by the what the Fed's doing. We've seen that the market's been going along roughly fairly stable ever since. Uh, if we take a look here, we're probably going to find about 24,500 or 24,700 is, is, the, is the level. Uh, it goes below that line. It goes above that line. But there's a line around 24,700, somewhere right around there. And uh, we see a few peaks. We see a peak here at 25,709. And we see a peak here at 25,316. Uh, but more or less, we've been going along ever since... Uh, uh february 8th until now we've been going along the same the market's just been going sideways and it's going to continue to go sideways uh until the i think around the middle of next month or the end of next month that's when i'm anticipating the fall in the market uh and the reason why that fall is coming is because the uh bond yields are going to start to rise sharply again Okay, so now let's take a look at oil. Oil is um, down 34 cents on the day. It's a half of a percent. Uh, it seems like this has leveled off this fall in the price of oil. It was 72.48 for sweet light crude. And uh, now it's down uh, to, uh, uh, it's found a level of around 66.13, somewhere around there. Just, just over $66. $66.55 right today, and it's found a level down here, and now it's going sideways too, like the market. Oil's going sideways right now. And so now let's take a look at cryptocurrency market capitalizations real quick. Uh, Bitcoin dominance is at 39.9%. We got $280 billion in market cap. Uh, all the coins have went back in the green again today. Uh, Litecoin still is down below a hundred bucks. Uh, I'll tell you this bounce back in cryptocurrencies right now, this little bit, little tiny bounce back. I think it's still in the bottoming process. Uh, these are these bottoms that Bitcoin is making are good times to cost average in to buy. Uh, what I mean by that is don't go buying your whole purse. Don't go spending everything on them. But buy a little bit each time they make a bottom. And each time they make a new bottom, down lower than the last bottom, uh, grab a little bit. And uh, hang on to it. H-O-D-L it. All the way down to the bottom. The bottom bottom. I don't know how low that bottom bottom could be. I'm thinking it actually, uh, uh, if it follows the last time, well, we made a high of $1,150. Right? And it went all the way down to like 200 bucks. And you could have bought it at 200 bucks a piece, right? It kept making bottoms. It did the exact same thing it's doing now. It kept making bottoms all the way down from uh, 1150 bucks all the way down to 200 bucks. Now, if you take that percentage-wise, 1150 bucks, and compare it to the percentage-wise of 200 bucks, well, take the 20,000 it went up to now and per do that same percentage-wise, how low would it go? four thousand dollar bitcoin that's how low it would go and on the other end of this if it did the same move upwards from two hundred dollars to twenty thousand that four thousand would turn into three hundred and sixty thousand if it does the same move again upwards later so you see the buying opportunity you could have in these in these that is possible in these cryptocurrencies if it just did what it did last time okay uh let's move on to the uh to the dollar today is 47.79 and uh it's had a pretty good little run it's had a pretty good little rally and this is thank you fed thank you federal reserve uh uh, for this rally in the dollar, they're what's holding the dollar up. They're supporting the dollar. If they could, if they stop supporting the dollar, the dollar's dead dead in the water. If they stop it, their support, but uh, this is why they have to keep going. They have to keep going with these policies. They've been getting away with it up till now. Uh, certain saving graces have been allowing them to get away with this. 
Uh, they're very clever at manipulating the markets, but what they're doing is they're creating pressure within the system. This is what they can't see, and they're very happy with themselves right now, I'm sure, because they're, they're seemingly getting away with what they're doing, the Federal Reserve, but they're creating a tremendous amount of pressure within the market, and the market, when it responds to that pressure, is going to bring extreme volatility. We haven't seen nothing yet. Do you remember going back to, to, to early this year when, when we had that volatility in the markets, a uh, thousand point drops and stuff? That's nothing compared to the pressure that's been coming on this market. And so right now you could say calm before the storm. Uh, can we say calm before the storm? Bonds and rates today. Um, we're looking at 2.9. We're looking at little drops in the, the in all of the rates. All the yields of these bonds have been dropping. Uh, this means that uh, strength in bonds right now, the fact that the yields are dropping. Uh, this means that the market is, 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 uh, is is finding buyers right now. Uh, and uh, how long this will continue when the Fed comes in with more uh, reverse quantitative easing, you know, uh, and, and this uh, selling of these uh, toxic assets into the market. They got $4.5 trillion. Let's see how deep the pockets are of these guys who are buying. Uh, right now they're holding it, but let's just see how deep their pockets really are. Okay, uh, so now let's take a look at Deutsche Bank real quick here. Deutsche Bank's on the fall today. She's fallen 9.42 euro right now. Uh, this is today's chart, but if we take a look at a month, we see that uh, Deutsche Bank has been uh, collapsed down to 9.16, and it made a little rebound, but now it's starting to try to collapse back down again. And those uh, idiots who bought into the Deutsche Bank stock, you know, um, they did so because they thought it was going to do what it did last time when it went up considerable and everybody doubled their money. I don't see that happening again this time. In fact, I don't see Deutsche Bank being saved. Honestly. Uh, who's going to save it? Who's going to put their neck on the line to save Deutsche Bank? I don't think anybody is. I don't think there's any governments willing to, they're going to be willing to save Deutsche Bank. I think Deutsche Bank's going down. It's just a matter of time and how long this is going to take this process. Now, Italy. Let's talk about Italy for a minute. First off, Italy is huge. Trillions of dollars. Uh, tr not dollars. Trillions of euros. Uh, Northern Eurozone officials, particularly the Germans, are anxious, fearing that they would ultimately bear the ECB's losses. They want quantitative easing to end. Uh, but this is the problem with Italy. Italy has is like they're trapped here uh, right now, and the if 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 uh, the ECB winds down the quantitative easing, which is what they're doing, uh, the euro is going to strengthen. Italy's interest rates uh, and and what they have to pay is going to rise further. It's going to increase Italy's financial fragility it's going to uh it's going to trigger uh these never used otms and it would spawn fractitious negotiations on physical austerity with italian authorities now now this is what it's going to do is it's going to put extra strain they're going to have to go back uh to uh italy will be forced to try and to go back to austerity measures Basically, what this means is, is the Italian people elected these populist government in Italy because they don't want austerity measures. They are so sick of austerity. They don't even want to hear the word. If they hear the word austerity, they're going to tear Italy to pieces. They're going to tear their own lives to pieces. They're going to tear their own hair out. They're going to pour gasoline on themselves and run down the street naked on fire if they hear the word austerity anymore in Italy. This is why they elected the government they got. The government that they got is trying to boost uh, government programs and things to to pacificate the people, to pacify them, to to try to settle them down. Hey, you know what? No more austerity. We're gonna bring prosperity to Italy, and they elected them in right now, right? And but when these same government officials have uh, have to meet with the European Central Bank and the European Central Bank says, hey, you know what? We're going to have to cut back, cut back, cut back. 
because we're out of money. And Italy's out of money and everybody's out of money. And we're not going to, we're not giving you any more, uh, uh, we're winding down these, uh, these quantitative easing programs where we're giving, extending you financial help to you, Italy. That's no more, no more, the ECB. Uh, well, suddenly that government in Italy is going to have to go back to the people and they're going to have to say ECB is, is cutting us all off here in Italy. What's going to happen is it's just going to be a, a we're going to see the people finally rise up. We're going to see everything just change uh, this this whole situation. And Italy is so big. If Italy falls, well, let me just pull this page up here a little bit and see see how big and powerful this is and what this guy's opinion is and his opinion's pretty much correct it's pretty much what my opinion is too it says euro and the ecb can't rescue uh it says opinion italy never should have joined the euro and the ecb can't rescue it from its next crisis it says italy could plunge the eurozone into an unimaginable crisis it says Italian financial tremors are again rumbling dangerously. Uh, I mean, this whole thing is Italy owes 2.5 trillion euros. <laughs> 2.5 trillion euros. It says it's the same size as the debt owned, owed, owed by the French and German governments. And it is larger than the combined government debt of Spain, Portugal, and Greece, and Ireland. Four countries that also need financial bailouts. An Italian financial crisis would quickly break through the defenses of the Eurozone authorities have constructed. In other words, we're talking about a financial collapse of the whole European Union. And the whole European Union falling into disarray and disorganization and basically falling apart. The European Union falling apart and the euro dying. It says Italy could plunge the eurozone into an unimaginable crisis. How would this affect us? And I was just yesterday explaining how Canada is ready to go into a crisis. Well, well uh, uh, going across the ocean over to China, China's ready to go into a crisis too. And now America is imposing trade uh, sanctions on them. Everything's getting ready to erupt. This is the calm before the storm right now, guys. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next show. Bye-bye.